right, guys, so I want to talk about this real fast because at 12 o'clock, waivers open and players are going to be signed different places. And keep in mind that, yes, we're probably going to be losing Wayman Johnson the third. And I got a comment down below, and I just want to go ahead and clarify this in this video for anyone who is, you know, confused or like, why why can't we keep, you know, Raymond Johnson third, but we were able to sign Will Greer? Well, the reason why is because of this. So, players are eligible for waivers if they have fewer than four years of um, service time in the NFL. If a player has more than four years, he is known as a vested veteran. They immediately become a free agent upon release. So any player who got cut yesterday who has been in the league for four or more years does become, again, a free agent right away. Any player who's been in the league for four, or four or years or less becomes a waiver wire player. So Raymond Johnson III, for example, becomes a waiver wire player. I believe he actually joined the league in 2020 with the New York Giants. So here's why, which again, it does suck, but this is why we're not going to be able to keep him. This is where we sit on the waiver wire. So keep in mind, all these teams get to pick before we get to pick. Chicago Bears, Houston Texans, Arizona Cardinals, Indianapolis Colts, Denver Broncos, LA Rams, Las Vegas Raiders. Yep, no, we're still going. Yeah, no, we're not picking yet, guys. Nope, 18? No, we're not picking 18. We're not picking a 20. 23 Ravens. Oh, nice, the Ravens, you know. Yeah, so we're 29th, just like our draft order. So keep that in mind at noon. These All these teams are going to be able to choose whatever guys they want. And there's 28 teams in front of us that get to choose before we choose. So, Raymond Johnson III could easily go to any of these teams before we even sniff the opportunity to pick him up. Or, let's say, for example, we might want somebody else other than Raymond Johnson III for our first pick. Well, we're going to get, you know snagged by another team he's going to get in the second pick. So, again, keep that in mind, guys, that, well, yes, you know, we all are sitting here thinking, like, oh, you know, like, who are we going to get? Who are we going to get? We're going to get the scraps of the scraps. And this is what happens when you go, you know, almost to the Super Bowl. This is what happens when you're about to be a Super Bowl team, is that in free agency, they don't give you the, you know, they don't, they don't, after cuts, they don't give you any privileges, right? It's kind of just like, nope, sorry, you're going to have to, you know, wait for everyone else to take all the good players, and then you get, you know, the scraps of that. Now, I always say good players. Listen, at the end of the day, a lot of these players that got cut will only be signed to people's practice squads. And I talked about this last video, but just because they're on a practice squad does not mean that they're on an active roster. So, for example, if any of these teams sign, you know, let's say Raymond Johnson III to their practice squad, we can go and sign them, sign him from their practice squad. So it's not just like, oh, well, you know, he's on their practice squad, so we lost them. No. If they, let's say, for example, let's say, I don't know, CLC Hawks say, Raymond Johnson III, he looked really good in preseason. Let's sign him to our practice squad. We, week three, can say, well, we kind of want Raymond Johnson III. Let's go ahead and sign him from their practice squad. It's just a longer process when you sign someone from another practice squad, um, except, obviously, other than your own, because your own, you can evaluate that player real quickly because of COVID restrictions. Um, so it's a little bit of process, but again, at any time also, that team can just elevate that player to their main roster, and you can't get him. But there is still opportunities to get him. Now, my guess is, with how he played in preseason, he's probably going to get signed to an active roster. Probably like a third or fourth spot on the active roster, which is going to take him away from any opportunity of us getting him or signing him. And again, there's a lot of players that get cut yesterday. Again, I just wanted to go ahead and stress this enough, though. But like, for example, yesterday, where they go down from 90 man to 53, which is what? That is around 37 players cut per team times 32 teams. That is 1,184 players got cut yesterday. So, and out of 28 teams, well, 32 teams here, 
there's 32 players that are going to get picked up first, right? The first waivers go through. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be some players now. Again, each team's going to have a, probably a list of players that they want, not just one player. But with that being said, you know, a lot of these players out of those 1,100. Now, keep in mind, there are some players that undrafted players. Jackson Kirkland is a good example of that. And etc. A lot of players, period. They might just not be good, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. So out of that 1,100 players, there might be I don't know seven, eight hundred players who are absolutely just bunts, right? They're just trash. They're not good. They're, they're like mid players. They're just like average undrafted guys that would never make a roster. You know those type of guys, right? But at least 300 of those probably will be either practice squad material guys. Or above practice squad material guys. Where players just simply get cut. Maybe it's veterans. Not veterans. But maybe it's like players, you know, who have played three years in the league who aren't veterans. But three years in the league who, you know, just simply did not make the roster. And that's very possible that they, again, become available. And we go after them or someone else goes after them. At the end of the day, you know, anyone who has real, I guess, who is a veteran veteran... They got cut. You can pick up right now. So you don't have to wait for that. So just keep that in mind. So we might see a couple players get signed today other than Will Greer to our practice squad. We're going to see, for example, I'm just going to tell you this right now. Michael Thomas, the strong safety, he's going to be signed today to the practice squad. 1,000%. That's not a question. Uh, Stanley Morgan is going to be signed to the practice squad. 1,000%. Not a question. Trent Taylor is going to be signed to the practice squad. Not a question, 100%. So keep in mind, there are players that we cut yesterday that are coming back to the practice squad. There's not even a question. Trevor Simeon probably won't get signed back to the practice squad. With them signing Will Greer today, I know I said earlier it's like a placeholder. It's not, I mean, when I say placeholder, guys, I don't mean that he's trash and he's not good. What I mean is that this is a signing where it's like, listen, there are probably going to be some quarterbacks that they might like in the waivers and they might put a waiver claim on that player. But if they don't get him, they're perfectly okay with going with Will Greer moving forward on their practice squad. That's fine. That's perfect, right? But at the end of the day, they can do that. Or, you know, let's say they like somebody else out there. This is kind of like, hey, listen, we want A, but we're probably not going to get A. So here's B. And we're going to keep B on our practice squad. That's what I meant by that. I don't mean like he's trash, like they're just signing him just to have a name. They're signing him because he is, again, the plan B if they can't get plan A. And I, I'm just saying all hypothetical. They might not even be targeting a quarterback on, you know, waivers. That, that's very, you know, that's one of those scenarios where getting like something. I'm just throwing a hypothetical out there. But when it comes to actual other players, we possibly could be looking at some pass rushers and stuff like that. No, As I said before, no squad, no 53-man roster is ever the same. And process squad and 53-man roster from cut day to week one. Never. You just can't have that because injuries happen, players get cut, players get picked up, some players don't work out, you know, etc. So, guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one.